Hey everyone, I'm Steph from OpenVC and today we are redesigning a startup pitch deck from scratch. So how does that work? I'm going to take 60 minutes only and let me start the timer now. So 60 minutes just using Google Slides and free tools and I will be explaining everything I do step by step. I will also be referring to the OpenVC templates and our guidelines that are available publicly at um, this URL here. And by the way, side notes, you should absolutely read that. Everything is here if you're building a pitch deck. The goal is to show you how to build a top 20% deck that you can redo yourself, you know, under time constraints, money constraints, you know, you're raising an angel round, pre-seed round. Well, this is how you can do it. It's not going to be a top 1% deck because top 1% takes time and takes skills that I don't have. I'm not a designer. I'm not a storyteller, but I've seen tons and tons and tons of decks. And so I will show you what I think is like a reasonable level that you're, um, you know, you, you can expect to, to reach before starting ac uh, accessing investors. To do that, we'll be using an original deck, a real pitch deck from this startup called Gratwick. And thank you guys for, you know, accepting uh, the, uh, the experience. Uh, so this is a deck that I think can be optimized in many ways. And actually I reviewed it a few months ago and uh, the, the feedback from the founder was, hey, I, I wish we could go more in detail. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, and just to be clear, I'm not being paid to do that. This is just part of our, you know, um, marketing efforts at OpenVC, trying to educate founders on, on this type of thing through content. So this is the real like pitch deck that they have at the moment. And let's see in the next, you know, 58 minutes, how we can, you know, make it better. Let's do it. So the first thing, of course, is we should check out the deck. So this is um, an interactive entertainment subscription startup uh, based on this tagline. Uh, the problem is described here. It's around streaming services that have downsides or problems. Uh, we see a lot of, you know, uh, measurements for that and, and, and survey results. Uh, and the solution here is a new app uh, centered on creators and communities, decentralized and driven by the community for the community. Business model is fairly simple. It's a subscription, $7.99 per month. Um, and then we have a few more slides about, you know, uh, things that, that are important about the market. So we're at the intersection of social networks like Twitter and YouTube and content platforms like Netflix. Go to market strategy, the team, the fundraising, and that's pretty much it. And after that, so there's a second version of the deck that they sent me recently that I just considered as appendix here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, here's going to be the redesign deck. So the first thing I do and the first thing you should do is taking notes. We're not going to jump right into creation. First, we want to think and use our little brains. So what I like to do is I like to go to, again, this tutorial, how to build a startup pitch deck. And I just copy the, the structure here. I'm going to paste it here. Whoop -la. I'm going to paste it here. Can I, can I paste? Uh, okay. I'm going to remove that. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's live as you can see. Let's just keep it here. And we want to think about what matters for each slide. Okay. And I just follow this, this, this template because I want to make sure that I hit every key aspect of the pitch. So the cover slide, we want the name of the startup. We want a tagline and potentially an illustration of some sort. Okay. Problem solution, these are the most difficult slides. So I always leave them at the end. I, I don't like them because you have to think a lot to really nail it. So we leave that for the end. But we want problem, we want solution. Uh, product slide. Um, so here we're probably going to want some mockups or some screenshots and a focus on you know, the killer features. What is unique, what is different. Traction, so here usually it's gonna be usage, it's gonna be revenue. If you don't have any of that, if you're in you know, a like pre-product, you want to show at least some testimonials 
some surveys or stuff like that, some wait lists. But those things here are weaker. It's much better if you can show some usage and some revenue, of course. Now, moving on to the business model. So in that case, it's going to be easy. It's a subscription. We saw that already. Uh, the market here, we want to show basically the subscription times the number of potential users. So I think this is subscription $7.99 per month, right? So that's eight times 12, that's $96 per year. By the way, I suck at math. So, so 96 times how many potential users, right? And depending on your market, maybe you start with, you know, the US market and then you expand abroad, or maybe you start on a vertical, for example, uh, younger crowds, you know, uh, Gen Z type of thing, you know, 18, 22 year old uh, Americans in big cities, and then you expand to the whole country or you expand, uh, you know, to all the demographics, these kind of things. So this is going to be our Tam Sam Sum that everyone knows. Then the go to markets, how you're going to reach your clients or your users or your customers. So we'll see about that. Competition. So we see there's some Netflix here, there's some uh, YouTube here. The team side, we saw that there are three people. Funding slides, so they're raising and then back up. So it's how much you're raising and the, the goals, what you will achieve with that. And the goals, by the way, is not how you will spend the money. It's not, oh, I'm going to hire two developers. We don't care about that. I mean, we don't care as much. What we care about is what you will achieve with that. So we're raising one mil to achieve, you know, $5 million in revenue within 18 months, right? And that number, by the way, allows us to raise the next round. So this is how you want to do it. Okay, so now we need to, to look a little more. We have some blanks, so we want to fill in the blanks. So problem, and so I read this, the slides already, so I'm going to save some time here. My understanding is that the problem that they, they state is not really a problem. The, the problem they state is that people demand greater value from streaming services while creators require a personal platform to deliver it. Streaming services, so we're talking about Netflix, for example. Static, stale, and unappealing, have too much overhead, and subscribers come and go based on new content and uh, piracy. Honestly, I mean, Netflix, Hulu, all those businesses are there. They're doing okay. So I think you don't want to open with a statement that can be easily challenged, right? I could say, you know what? Like, Netflix is doing well. Like, like there's no problem to solve. And that's my first insight is you don't want to stick to the problem solution thing. Maybe it's not a problem. Maybe it's an opportunity. And I think this is much more appealing in some cases when you're not selling, you know, if you're selling a medicine, if you're selling a new drug, yeah, you're solving a problem, right? But if you're selling an improvement, if you're saving entertainment, like it's a case here, you're probably not solving a problem. You're probably surfing the wave of a new trend, a new opportunity. It's the same thing in e-commerce. It's the same thing in CPG. It's the same thing in most consumer stuff, really. So here, I don't want to use problem. I'm going to use opportunity or something like that. And then um, this project is kind of a marketplace because you have two sides. You have the audience and you have the creators. And this, what I'm going to say now, is for everyone who is building a marketplace. So if you're building something like Uber, like Amazon, with multiple sides, what I suggest, what I recommend, is tell the story from one side, okay? So if you're uh, doing an Uber thing with drivers and riders, tell the story from the rider point of view for, you know, the first five, six slides. And then at some point you can say, oh, and by the way, we also create a great experience for drivers. But this is much easier to have a nice story that flows really well, something really smooth, if you just take the story from one angle. If you try to tell both sides in parallel, it's, it's hard for the reader to, to keep the, all of that in mind, right? So, so that's the second thing I would do. And the third thing is we have here, you know, some survey results to kind of prove that there's a problem. Um, I'd be careful with that, you know, uh, survey results are um, a very partial look into the truth. And again, when you open your deck, you want to start with something that people will not challenge. You want to start something that 
something people will agree with. So we'll try to find maybe a more powerful, um, a more powerful opening here. Yeah. So let me let me tell you what I would do. I would start with something like um, it's not a problem slide; it's an opportunity or a shift, right? Like where the market is changing, there's an opportunity. I would go with um, interactivity because this whole project is about interactivity. Interactivity is taking over the entertainment industry, right? So I spoke a lot. Okay, we still have 50 minutes. Taking over the entertainment industry. And so this is our opportunity now to bring a solution, which is we're building the, you know, uh, we're building uh, the entertainment platform for the age of interactivity, something like that. Yes, yeah, sorry for the for the typos. I don't really care. <laughs> okay. So and then um, and then what's really nice when you do those kind of you know shift slides is saying the uh, like giving a big number to kind of you know anchor your statement. So here I would go to Chat GPT. How big is the um, so entertainment is maybe too large, so let's say streaming industry in the US. So they say 30 billion, that's nice. Let's go with that. And I know, of course, you are the intersection of, you know, streaming and social media, but we have to pick one. Let's just go with that for now. So I would go with, so let me pick something here. Um, well, I'll do the slide later. We have we have something here, so we can continue. Interactive take of the thirty billion dollar entertainment industry. So what you want to say here is there is something happening, right? That doesn't depend on us, right? There is a trend. There is a mega trend, and we're going to ride it. We're going to surf that wave, and that's why we are different or better or unique versus Netflix versus you know anybody else because we built we designed for that opportunity. You know, just like people are rebuilding CRM for AI or people are rebuilding, I don't know, social media for blockchain, you can rebuild streaming for interactivity. So that's a kind of, you know, high level view that you can take. Okay, then this we have, so the killer features, what are the killer features here? I saw some slides about it. Um, so live reality show, okay. Live set and premieres, interest of every stream, engage with creative. Okay, I think these are our features here. Let me see if I'm missing something. Own branded app. Okay, I would probably pick those three things here. So these are my features, kind of. So what makes my product stand out? And of course, the product has many, many, many features, but we want to focus on the, you know, the three things that matter the most. Okay. Sorry if it doesn't look super good. I'm just trying to. You know, it's not easy to build and and record at the same time. Okay. So basically you want to focus on the three features that really make a big difference. Okay, moving forward. Traction slide. So here we said we want some usage or revenue. I think they are pre-product. So this is a very, very early project. Um, and so for that reason, if you don't have traction, you want to borrow credibility. And you borrow credibility from two sources, really. So either you run a survey or something like that, um, and that's what they did, right? So here. So I would just, I would not pick like five. Five is too many. I would just, you know, pick top three numbers. And another source of credibility is testimonials. So. Maybe, you know, and I, f I don't know if that's the case. Maybe they have an advisor or maybe they have someone in their ecosystem that can, you know, that is an authority and that could say, yeah, those guys are doing the right thing. And that's what you can use when you don't have traction. Um, I mean, when you don't have traction yet, because of course, at some point you need to have traction. Um, yeah, I don't think... Yeah. 
Okay, so I think we're going to have to use the, the, the survey results here. Survey results. Okay, the business model slide, that's easy. The market slides, um, well, uh, so this, we're going to leave it for now and come back later. Yeah, let's, let's, let's get started. Let's start building because time is running out. We have 45 minutes left. But you see what I've done here is I try to put my thoughts in order. It's easier to think on paper and then create, but it's always a back and forth. So when I start the slides, then some ideas, you know, pop up and I'll use them. But so let's try to start with a cover slide. So here, here are some examples of good cover slides. And you see, it's always the name of the startup is the biggest thing, the first thing you see, right? Then we have a tagline that is clear and descriptive. We don't want something like, you know, uh, transforming, uh, transforming uh, the industry. That's too generic. You want something specific that explains what you do. Just do it is good when you're called Nike and you're a big brand and people know you, you know. I'm loving it is a good tagline for McDonald's because people know them already. But you, as a startup, you're nobody. Nobody knows you. You're, you're a stranger. You're random. And so you need to be clear about what it is you're doing and why you're better. So let's try to pick something like that, for example. So those slides, I mean, I'm just trying to save some time here. Uh, they come from the... So I would go with... What's the war? What's the name of the startup again? Gratwick. Gratwick. And so they say interactive entertainment subscription. So the tagline is important because when investors open it, you know, that's the first, the kind of first yes, no that goes through their brains. Subscription is good because subscription means recurring revenue. So that's always nice. Entertainment, media, streaming. This is usually, I mean, this is a niche in VC, right? Most VCs don't do that. Um, I mean, most tech VCs don't do that. You would have to find, you know, investors that specialize in, in media production. So here we're kind of in a kind of, you know, intersection that is quite narrow. So you want to be careful with, with the words you use. Um, so I think we have the key information, but maybe we could just with some copywriting make it sound a little better. Um, so we said interactive subscription entertainment uh, so I guess subscription is kind of I mean we'll see if we need to keep it so uh, we are building the we're building interactive uh, a new well we'll see but yeah Entertainment subscription. We'll get back to it later. So the, another thing that I have when I build pitch decks is I try to gain momentum. So I don't want to, to be stuck on a slide because it kind of, you know, uh, solidifies you in a, in a bad state of mind. You want to get as many quick wins as you can. You know, you want to move from slide to slide and then come back. So it's a very chaotic process, at least for me. But that's, that's what I, I found to be working for me. So first, I want to talk about the opportunity, uh, the kind of market change. So I will start with a big statement. Um, so let's see. Let's take uh, this one, for, for example. So, so the, the, we said interactivity is taking over the payment. And we say it's $30 billion. It's free in the US, right? So we always want to be specific, right? Because this is probably not true, I don't know, in China or India or wherever, or maybe it is, but you know, it's not our market. Um, so what's good is do we have something to support that? Um, trends or stuff like that. Uh, and as I said, a survey is not really, you, you want something that is undeniable. Um, if we don't, we're just gonna hide that with some some design. I can add a bit of space here. Yeah. So 
So I guess, so what does that mean? Stuff like, I guess, TikTok. Yeah, so we want to talk about TikTok. What else? So we probably need a number two and number three. We need some examples of, you know, interactive content that have been successful. We'll come back to that. Then solution slide. We're building the platform for that. Um, and actually we could merge solution and product slide. I think this would be relevant here to do that. So we'll take that template, put it here. So we're building the, uh, what did I say here? Uh, we're building the entertainment platform for the age of interactivity. Yeah, that's good. Keep in mind, I'm not a graphic designer. I just try to get the flow right. And then we probably want a product screenshot. So we just have this one. So we'll use this, All right? Okay. Let's make this a bit bigger. So I'm gonna crop a little here and there. And so there's a little trick here what you can do is yeah you can just remove this and then you send this to the back there you go and it fits perfectly so here is your you know and you can probably do the same for the for the phone i don't know if there's a mobile app but let's assume there is you can just do this do that i'm just using google slides nothing special Basically, I want to show that you have a product, right? Um, it's the same thing here. I'm going to click here. Oh, sorry. Okay. And then... Let's see. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's not quite right. Make it a bit smaller here. Uh, we can probably crop the image. No, change the shape of the image. Let me see. <laughs> I don't know if we can actually. Yeah, we can, okay. So you see what I did? You, you select an image and then you can go to shape and change the shape here to make rounded uh, corners. So now it should fit better. Okay, looks better. Okay, so now we have clean corners. I mean, it took me like 30 seconds, but you know, now it's clean, right? Uh, it didn't take much time. And then what I want to show is that, so we have killer feature number one. So our features, um, so we listed them already. So we have auditions, so we have this one. Now what's very important is you don't want to give too much information because people don't read. Like something that founders really need to get through their brains that anybody got time for it, right? People won't read. So keep it short, keep it, keep it, you know, Nice and short. No. To add a little. Ah, oh, it's not working. Okay. And then I want to add a little space here. Okay. So I would go like this. I'd go like this. Okay. There are like six lines. That's already quite a bit, but it doesn't look too bad. So let's keep it. Additions, live sets, and premieres. I don't even know what that means, but okay. Every stream. Okay, that's not too bad. I like it. Let's continue. Interactive experience. How much time do... Oh, 30 minutes left. Damn, I have to go fast. Okay. So, see what I'm doing? I'm really like doing what I would be doing. Uh, for real. Okay, I want to add a little... So, you see this kind of little detail. Like, I skip... Add a little bit of space here. It just looks nicer. And we want this to be 12. Yes. So we want to keep the same kind of, yeah. 
Okay, so for example here, see I have four lines. That's one too many, right? People go up to three and that's it. So I can just the time, and you show the q and A. So I guess we can kill this, right? So it's important, like honestly, uh, the content, the message is important, but the, the look is as important. So um, I can remove this, I can probably move this one here. Okay, maybe we have a third one. Okay. So same here, it's way too long. So we're just gonna go with new revenue streams. Let's keep in mind, you're not trying to explain everything you do, right? You're just trying to get a call with the investor. And when you have the call, that's when you can explain all your beautiful plans and you know, but not yet. You haven't earned that right. You haven't earned their attention. So I want to do something clean and damn, that doesn't fit. Okay, not an issue, can do like that. Okay. So, sponsorship opportunities. Okay. I think we're good. Yeah. Now we can probably, you know, if I had a bit more time, I would probably like make this a bit bigger. That would give me some space at the top, but Okay, so this one still sucks. I agree, this one is still weak. But this one is pretty cool, no? I like it. Um, we could maybe play with colors here. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's good. Let's not go too far. Let's continue, time is running out. So traction, so traction. So once you've built, you've explained, okay, so there is an opportunity, right? Interactivity is taking over the entertainment industry. And we've built a solution. The next step is showing that you're not crazy. That's called traction. Because uh, a vision without traction means you've built something in your head and you're crazy. A vision with traction, with people using the product or with people confirming that there's demand for it, now that's a business. So uh, if I look at my traction slide here, so as you see, they're all like they have numbers. Uh, or they have testimonials, right? But even the testimonials, it's we have $2 million of letter of intent. So um, in our case, we don't have any of this. I think we just have some numbers um, here, right? So I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna see what I can do with it. Oh yeah, then it disappeared. Oh yeah, because I think it was black background, that's why. Okay. And so as you can see, by the way, this font is way too small. This will not be read on, um, on a mobile phone, on a smartphone. And VCs, angels will open your deck on a smartphone. So this is too small, this will never be read. So less is more. Here, you will put fewer information, but, okay. So this would be kind of attraction slide. Um, so let's pick the ones that we think are more, you know, significant. 84% uh, dissatisfied with current options. 63% more engagement with favorite creators. With another solution, it's feeling more value. Okay, so I think I'm gonna with the 79, the 84 and 63 here. I think they're more significant. It's just my opinion. So let's do that. So again, as I said, I mean, this is a suboptimal situation. In a perfect world, you know, you have a wait list, for example. You can say, hey, we have, you know, 10,000 people on our wait list um, or pre-sales or stuff like that. Especially in B2C, you can do pre-sales. Uh, that's, that's nice. Okay. This one is important because that's your whole thesis, right? Your people choose live content over traditional content. Let's do that. Yeah, I know it's quick and dirty, but that's who I am. Okay. Okay, now we can read. Okay. 
So obviously, I mean, I would recreate them if, if I were, but we don't have time. We have 30 minutes left. So I'm going to go with uh, and so the title and now I'm going to give you a very, I think something that is very important. Um, the title of the slides. So the title of the slides, think of your slide as real estate. Okay. The bottom left corner has low value because people won't read it. The top right, is something that everybody reads, the, the title of the slide. So that's the prime real estate. And because it's prime real estate, you want to write here the important stuff. You want the thing that people must know about your startup. And that's why I suggest you don't... I suggest your slide title should not be just team or problem or traction because uh, this is very generic. It doesn't convey any value, any information. It's nothing new. What you want to do is you want to have what we call an action title. An action title is subject, verb, complement, and it gives you the key message of the slide. So here, for example, so we've surveyed 1,000 plus users uh, or potential users who confirmed a need for the product. So this is a, a weekly, you know, phrased title, but that's the idea, right? You don't say, hey, we spoke to the users and they confirm this is what they want. But of course, I'm saying this is weak because we all know that people don't know what they want, right? You ask them in a survey, they tell you something, and then when you ask them to pay, they don't pay. So that's why, as a founder, you shouldn't make surveys your main source of validation because everybody is kind of doubtful of survey results. Nobody trusts them, really. I mean, you get it. So... Uh, a thousand plus surveyed users have confirmed a need for, and now maybe we can reiterate the name of the company, right week. Yeah, would be even better if the survey was like, would you buy and can you leave your email address? And you know, and then you, you have a, a wait list of potential users. Okay, so I would probably go with that. Um, yeah, again, I mean, the titles are still too small, huh? but, but with the time I have, I don't have time to fix that. I'll come back if, if I have time later. Let's continue. We have 27 minutes left. So what's next? We have problem, solution, traction, business model. Okay. So we said, okay, we have a, pro we have a product. People are using it. Or people want it. Next, show me the money. How do we make money? And sometimes it's obvious, like in this case, it's going to be an easy one. Um, let me see what I have. Yeah, it's going to be something like that. So if you're a marketplace, you know, you can have two sides. But in our case, maybe this is fine. Okay, so... Um, Subscription seven ninety nine. So let's see the data they gave us. The uh, okay here. So this is what you get in your subscription. I'm just gonna copy paste that. Just checking. Okay. Oh, interesting. That's for the market side. We're gonna use that for the market side. Okay, that's that's interesting. Okay, so let's let, let's I'll, I'll keep that in mind for now. We need to what to say? Okay, this is what I want, and I want it here. Okay, so uh, submission. So we're basically gonna have one plan. So we can delete this one at seven ninety nine a month. subscription is perfectly priced uh, for uh, our target whatever so again you, you don't just say hey our price is 7.99 you don't say hey why is it a good price basically every slide is not about informing it's about convincing 
So every slide, so okay, it's not our market is, you know, $300 million. It's our market, you know, offers the right size uh, to, to reach the, you know, revenue targets we have. Uh, our team is not our team is like A, B, and C's. Our team has the right skill sets and the right experience and the right connections to succeed. So every slide is about why is it great? And maybe you can find it. So I imagine in our specific case here, um, people already have tons of subscriptions. So on the price that fits nicely into an existing sub subscription package or, you know, that, that families with already three, four subs can afford. Uh, it's perfectly priced for um, highly uh, solicited. Again, I'm not a native English speaker and, you know, uh, a copywriter would do a better job than me, a storyteller. So it's $7.99 per month. And then here on three features and you could, you know, give some details here. Um, so. So again, like this is a lot of text. Nobody's going to read that. So I'm going to go with, what do you get? Exclusive access to project submission, career opportunities, access to entire creative process. So here you want to kind of wrap this up in one or two words, right? Imagine it's your like pricing table on your website. So what do you get? So uh, I guess content access. Um, I don't know how you call those things. Movie participation, contribution. And uh, decision rights. Like so basically, yeah, this, this project is about, as a paid member of the, the platform, you can influence, you can, you know, act in some of the movies, you can contribute with decisions and this kind of stuff. And then on the right, you can explain more content access, you know, uh, get uh, unlimited access to the content produced by the community. Then this one, uh, movie contribution. And again, this is probably not the correct word, but it's just time consuming for me to think about those things because it's not, it's not my language. Uh, movie contribution, so uh, um, review, uh, no, we said like, uh, apply to be part of the crew or the casting of the uh, films produced by uh, our community. And point three, um, decisions rights. Decision rights. Every month, vote for uh, what gets produced next and how the budget is spent. I, I have no idea. I, I'm not going to read. I mean, I don't have time. I'm just trying to give you the direction of where this should go, right? So, something like that, something like that. That okay, can center it a little. Can we? Can we center it? Come on, come on. Yes, okay, we got it. Uh, I don't know in English, I think you put dots, right? Okay, so uh, right quick. Yeah. So you see, like we're saying the same thing here and here but one of them is easier to read. And that's what I always, you know, I know people on, on Twitter, a lot of you guys and girls, you tell me, eh, the design doesn't matter, right? Content matters and what I say matters. And if people don't read, it's their loss. And what everyone needs to understand is that we 
are visual animals, okay? Our eyes are our most developed sense. And at some point, design gets in the way of the message. So, okay, you have good content, you say smart things, but if you don't make it appealing, people will not make the effort to read it. Now, you may consider it's their loss, you know, but it's also your loss because you reduce your pool of opportunities. And if you're raising funds, it's probably not a good thing. Okay, so at some point, you know, either you you stick to your principles or you understand that this is marketing. And marketing, I mean, you don't need to do something beautiful, but make something that at least people want to read. So I think this kind of stuff is much more, you know, convincing. Okay, let's continue. And by the way, another thing, you see that I'm jumping from a white background to a black background to gray. Maybe it's a little too much. Uh, I'm trying to use some pink for continuity. Uh, I could use here, for example, you know. But uh, what really matters is that from one slide to another, I have different layouts. So that's another big piece of advice that you will find again in my tutorial here. And this is a massive you know, piece of content. People get bored. If you show them the same layout, slide after slide, for example, here, we have the same layout, right? Same layout, same layout, same layout. Like, this one's a bit different, they're bullet points. But otherwise, it's very similar. So you, people's attention drop. It's a natural thing. But if you show them every time, um, you know, a different... Um, oh, I know how I'm going to do this one. Found it. Okay. Interactivity is taking over the Freddy Bean entertainment industry. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do this like this. I'm going to make it a little smaller. See, sometimes it just comes to you like that. Uh, then let's remove this. Okay, so we want to convince people that uh, interactivity is taking over the 30 billion entertainment industry. I don't really have numbers or stuff to back it up, so I'm going to use logos. So I'm going to use TikTok. Um, logo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put logos all around my sentence, right? And this is kind of an indirect way to back it up. Um, so this is going to take a bit of time, so I'm probably not going to do it all. I'm just going to do like two or three to show you what I have in mind. But I would probably do something like this. Then we have YouTube, of course. You know, like all the big players. YouTube logo. Uh, maybe this one, I don't know. So... Obviously, so you'd like something where they're all same size, same look. So we probably want a square logo. Mm. Mm, something like that, why not? Ah, it's a... And yes, you will spend time doing dumb stuff like that. Like they're just searching the right logo. It's a waste of time, I know. Um, Honestly, I looked into, you know, AI powered uh, pitch deck builders. I actually did a video review on that. Um, and they're not so good for now. Um, maybe they will be, you know, in a few in a few months, a few years, but not yet. So basically what I want to do, and I will probably make them like black and white or so people focus on the... Is it this one? Yeah. So people focus on the, the key message. I would make them smaller too. Basically, I will line up, you know, like four or five logos top and bottom to support my statement, this statement here, right? And I could probably, I mean, yeah, I could even do something like, uh, something like that, and like that, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I don't have time to do much more, but you get the idea. You do like this, do some at the bottom. And yeah, something like that. Or the other way around, right? White and, and black in the middle. So that the, the, you want the key message to pop up. You want people to focus on that. And the logos are just supporting your statement. And you know, and then it's undeniable. If you say, hey, there's TikTok, YouTube, Twitter now has video and all that stuff then nobody's going to argue with you that interactivity is taking over entertainment. Okay, it's just a fact at this point. And then you say, we, and insta so another thing, and I know I'm just dropping little nuggets here and there, but 
don't use future tense, you know, like don't say we will build, say we are building or we have built. It's um, it make it sound much more present. That's a small detail, but you know, and you can also just say building the entertainment platform to age of interactivity. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's continue. So, what's next? Uh, business model market slide. Okay. So the market slide. So first thing, the one thing we need to see here is the market size in US dollars. Okay. And market size is money. Uh, let's take a look at what we have in store. And I could, you know, I could rebuild them. I just used the templates. I mean, I built them, so I can rebuild them. But I just don't want to waste time doing it okay let's pick let's pick this one for example it's simple uh, it's neat so obviously you know you have your tam your sam your sum so we have a, a 30 billion market growing so i don't know Last is the Yeah, in percent. And you see, I'm using uh, the free GPT. So, okay. So apparently, it's it's at least ten percent double digit. So let's just go with something like. Uh, and you, you, I mean, it's your job to research that. Uh, I'd say twenty. Okay. So we would have we would sell seven ninety nine. Right, so it's $96 per year times, so that's the annual revenue per account. And then that would be for, I don't know how many users, potential users, so that you have to know your market size. But you guys are predicting, uh, I saw it somewhere. Okay, 250,000. And so that's where you have to be really good at market sizing, um, like, and how you tie it to your go-to market. So who would you start with? Will you start by, you know, um, a certain demographic, another dem demographic, a certain geography, another geography, a certain, um, you know, premiumization level, like, you know, rich people, poor people, basically, uh, B2B, B2C, I don't know that, I don't know your market. But you probably uh, want uh, more narrow to say 250. And so that'd be, I don't know, um, US, so let's say US Gen Z consumers. Um, yeah. You know, like, and, and, and then basically your market slide should show that you understand and you can break down your market in a smart way. So that's 250,000 times 96. That's 24 million. Okay. And then here you can show how you can expand that. So you can say, uh, you know, US millennials, you know, plus uh, whatever, I don't know, uh, 500K. And then uh, if you add EU, it's another plus, I don't know, 2 million, whatever. Oh, it's not working. Interesting. Okay, plus two million, whatever. So that's one way to do it. Um, it's pretty simple. I like even more this kind of template. Oh, we have 10 minutes left. This kind of template where you show, you know, the kind of step-by-step uh, -step expansion into the market. Um, but it takes uh, a bit more time and research. But I would suggest using something like that if you can, if you have time. Okay, let's continue. Mm -mm -mm. So go to market, how will you go to market? How will you access your 
customers, your users. So we have it here. Uh, influencers and niche brands and, and third party platforms. So that's that's a bit light. I like to see you know a more like a clearer go to market strategy. Um, so for example, I'm just gonna show you an example. Uh, okay. So this kind of stuff, I mean, that's a bit, you know, advanced, but explaining your funnel, acquisition, activation, retention, retention, referral revenue, you know, at each step, um, all the, the channels that you plan to use. If you're doing B2B, you can go with something like that, um, showing upsell, cross sell, and um, yeah, so something a, a little more structured. And you don't want to just give a list. You don't want to say, hey, we're going to do influencers and SEO. You want to try to give also some numbers, some conversion rates or expected ROI. You want to, to show, I mean, obviously, obviously this is not true because you haven't done it yet. And you want to show that you have some mastery or some commands of your go-to-market. That's, that's important. So here in our case, uh, you know, we could go with something like that after all. Let's assume this is like product-led growth that we want to have. So, something like that. So, um, we are going for product-led growth. And so, more, you know, users, um, no, more creators, more experience, better adoption, uh, more content uh, and more audience and increased thickness, whatever, you know, you have this kind of wheel showing and then we want numbers. I mean, this is still not good, right? We, we don't see, um, we don't see any numbers. We don't see any conversion rate, but I guess in this specific case, there is some kind of network effect. And this is, this is something you want to show. Um, yeah. So I think this had, I don't have enough material to, to build it. Mm, competition. And we're running out of time. We have eight minutes left. So I need to speed up. Competition, competition, competition. Yeah, so that's kind of this slide. And by the way, you don't need a competition slide all the time. I mean, you're a startup. You're just you know, starting to build in a new space, something innovative. You don't really have competition. So here, I'm just going to look at those guys here. Um, so I guess all the ones decentralized, honestly, never heard of them. I don't think they are, you know, are they your competition? Are like, are you all fighting for the same audience? That's the first question. Are you going after the same users? I don't know. Is YouTube, uh, you know, a substitution of you? Are you substituting to YouTube? Or are you complementing it? I don't know. Um, but when I look at the competition slide, I like to understand, you know, how you're unique or better or different. So here we have, uh, I know what creators need because I've been looking for it for more than a decade. An end-to-end -end platform we can brand as a popular zone. So I think this is the important part here. End-to-end -end platform we can brand and operate as our own. So that's, that's a good thing. That's the difference. And that's what is hidden at the bottom of the whole text that nobody will read. So now I like that. Now we can do something with that. Let me grab a good competition. Um, competition. Um, so we could go with something like that. Actually, it's not too bad. Um, we offer the only end-to-end. Ah, oh, I have to undo it. That's right. <sighs> yeah, that's part of the job. Okay, so that would be the Great Week logo, obviously, not OpenVC. Uh, the only end to end platform that creators can operate and brands as their own. Is that right? 
Okay. And so here you have like, you know, a streaming platform. So that's like Netflix, I guess. You know, you have Netflix and, uh, and uh, what else, Hulu. Uh, number two is gonna be like uh, social media. It's kind of, uh, and of course you should use the logos, right? I don't have time, so I go with that. So Twitter, Facebook. And number three is going to be the decentralized platforms. I've never heard of any of those guys, so I don't know if it's like even worth putting them on the map. Um, like, would you be fighting with those guys to steal their users, or would you be fighting with these guys? I don't know. Digital age and uh, whatever. And so, yeah, what you in your case specifically, you can see that hey, we are not, you know. Um, com like we, our value prop is different because we, you know, package, we rebundle, um, uh, we rebundle the creator experience into the only. Yeah, that's a bit, that's a mouthful, but the concept of bundling and unbundling is something that this is like. Um, that's um, a well-known concept. And what you guys are doing is kind of bundling, uh, bundling um, social media and video streaming to yeah. yeah, something like that. So you would have to pick between one and the other. Um, but I think they're both interesting. Uh, that's good ways to describe what you're doing. And this is variable. Having the right words is variable. So we can choose the only end-to-end -end platform. Creators. Yeah, that's nice. The only end-to-end -end platform creators can operate and brand as their own. Right. So here you have a something, here is something, here is something. Cool, uh, what's left? Three minutes left. So team, funding, okay. So I think I'm gonna need five more minutes. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go over time. Uh, let's see, so this one we kill. So we want the, so we need the funding slide and with the team, 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 okay, team. So where is the team? Here, let's go with this one. So here we have a nice team slide. We have nice photos, but too much information. Again, people won't read too much text. Uh, yeah, and we want all the photos to be kind of standardized. So I go here and Visuals are important. I mean, especially if your whole project is in the realm of, um, of uh, you know, social media and stuff. So see, I'm trying to get all the photos have the same size. Okay. See, I mean, it takes like two seconds too, and it's gonna look cleaner. And if you can have them square, it's probably even better. How big is that? Okay. Um, also, I mean, obviously, you didn't take photos on purpose for this deck. It would be nice if you would, and you would have something, you know, uh, unified, cohesive, right? Everybody with the same background. If it's not this the case, you can use this little website I really love, Remove Background. So, for example, I would take uh, this one here just to show you how it works. Take this one here. Put it here. Yeah, but the fact that like one photo is in color, the other is in black and white, you know. I mean, honestly, I, you could say I'm nitpicking. You could say it's a detail, it doesn't matter. But like, how much effort does it take to just ask everyone in the team to take a nice photo, ask your, you know, your partner, whoever, take a nice photo of you, remove the background like I just did. You know, it takes seconds. And I think it does make a difference in, you know, how you're perceived, even on an and conscious level. Then you can add a little background here. Uh, 
you know, color of your choice, whatever. I can remove that. Yep, that's not bad. Okay. And then we probably want to change the color here. It's not so nice. Ah, time. I'm gonna go a little over time, sorry. So can we have a nice background here? Maybe, uh... so OpenVC is pink, so I'm always gonna, yeah. And maybe we add a little effect here, a little shadow. Okay, so the pink is ugly. Definitely not, let's just stick to white. But yeah, you have, yeah, I don't know, I don't like what I'm seeing. Anyway, you get the idea, right? Just do something that, that looks a bit cleaner than uh, than that, right? So I have it one here. Okay. Then you do the same for, uh, for this person here. And the same for that person. And I, as I was saying, like, images matter. We're visual animals. We empathize uh, with like faces. This is very important. Like every single ad you see for, um, you know, for charities, for example, they always show you, like they, they actually tested that. Does it work better if we put, you know, one face or two faces or three faces, what like elicit more emotional reaction? So yeah, th th this is very important, right? Because you're not here in person. And then we want to see who's a founder, who's not. So in that case, we'll have uh, so we have an investor who's also a director. Okay, that's cool. Why not? Um, so I guess Haley is not a co-founder. So we actually have one founder who's, I guess, the CEO too. And so this is something we usually want to see. And I'll tell you why. Because in many early stage companies, there are like ego battles and, you know, people are not happy with their titles, all this kind of stuff. And you want to signal that you are not in that case. You want to say, okay, the roles are clear. Everybody's happy. So founder, CEO, uh, and then the, this person is, uh, um, what's his title here? Brand strategy, I guess. So I'm gonna say marketing. And that person here, who's a, he's a director. Okay, so here's what happens. So this person is director, but director is kind of management title, but doesn't tell us what this person does every day. And that's a problem because you're an early stage startup. So you don't need directors. There is nobody to direct. You don't have, you know, 10 uh, people under you. You don't have 10 N minus one. So you want to focus on what they do with their two hands, you know? Um, and so that would be, for example, uh, I don't know, IT, right? Or software dev. And that's important because you want one person, you want to show that you have all the skill set that you need. So you have one person that has the tech, let's say, one person that knows the business and um, another person. Like, I mean, at least you want a business side and the tech side. It's important to have both. And then, uh, as I said, no, people won't read like four lines of paragraph. So you want to focus, just give the key achievements. So here for uh, Chris, that'd be... Okay, there's a lot of words, but we need like, you know, to be able to capture the one or two or three key achievements in your, you know, academic or professional career. And um, yeah, so I think you had another slide actually about that. It was much better. Yeah, okay, now that's good. Okay, I'm just gonna copy paste this one here. Okay, so John here, or Chris, has the industry experience. Uh, that's good. Then we have, um, is it Robert here? I don't know. Okay, so when someone is also like current founder of another startup, that can be a red flag, because you want people to be you know, fully devoted to the current startup, not another one. So you want to, but we can steal that, 50 years. Okay, we can go with that. Uh, 
and this person here would be the, the third one. Try to make it as tangible as you can. And that's something that a lot of founders just don't get. So what does tangible mean? We want names and numbers. So for example, if you say that 10 years of experience as a brand strategist, what brands have you worked for that I know? You know, um, Award-winning filmmaker, okay, what award? If, I mean, if it's you know, worth mentioning, um, yeah. And again, like from a design standpoint, I mean, this is still not good. Huh? This, that the photos are not good. They're not exactly square. Um, the, the, the boxes are not aligned like they should. It's not a lot of work. I just won't do it here, but yeah. So uh, our founding team brings the right mix of tech expertise, go to market and filmmaking, uh, making expertise. Okay, and the last one was the ask. So how much you're raising? So this one, honestly, is super easy because usually you, that's the only thing you've really thought about. All the rest, uh, you do it because you, you, you don't have a choice, but this one, this is the one you actually want to, to do. Um, so what I, so in that case, um, you see what I suggest is like how much you're raising and what you're going to do with that. How much you're raising and what you're going to do with that. Um, if you have commitments, you want to show them, of course, right? Uh, so already 70% committed and who has invested, that's good. If you're like a more, you know, mature startup, you can also have this kind of advanced like milestones and stuff like that. Um, if you have raised before, you can show that too. But really what matters is showing how much you're raising and what you're going to do with it. So in our case, we could use that and go, where is it? Here. So I think they're raising 200K to, um, to launch. And so in terms of milestones, I would suggest if you can to avoid product milestones because they are not directly tied to the success of the business. So if you say, hey, we're raising 200K to build the first version of the product, that's not super exciting because it means there's still tons of risk involved. If you say, hey, we're raising 500K to get to a million dollar in annual revenue, now it's exciting because you're gonna make money with my money. You're not gonna spend it. And I know it's, you know, it's not how it's supposed to be and where is the risk in venture, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, this is how a lot of people think. So, Renable, really referring here to, um, to get to $1 million AR in 18 months. I'll buy 2026, let's say, buy. Uh, sure. And another thing, if you're, pitching professional investors, VCs. They always think about the next round. So you want to show them that you think about the next round and that the targets and the milestones and the objectives that you set for yourself will put you in a good position to raise the next round. Otherwise, you know, their money is lost. So here, I know that if I reach these numbers in, in 18 months, I can raise my, you know, my Series A or something like that. So in that case, we could even you know, increase the number a bit, whatever. Okay, so, and then we want a cover, back cover. That's the easy one. But people still sometimes, you know, don't do it right. Uh, let's take uh, this one, for example. Okay, here. So the back cover uh, should be, so I think it's a Chris Hulbert. Chris at startup.com and then Chris photo here. Um, again, you can easily change the shape here. Okay. Yeah, I, I really don't recommend black and white. Um, if you're in Asia, like I am, black and white is for dead people. So that's number one. And number two, uh, I mean, decks are boring. So if you can bring a bit of color, you know, 
and have everybody smiling, happy, professional, facing the camera, not looking away. Uh, that's just, I mean, that's just better. Okay, so we're done. Here it is. It's, well, it's one hour since, you know, I mean, I started the timer a bit early. So let's, let's take a final look. So, um, okay, we still need a good, something good here. So you know what? Let me change that. Let me go with this one. So it's less work for me. Because we already have here a screenshot type of thing. So I don't want to repeat it again. So I'm going to go with this. Right week. And that's going to be uh, the entertainment platform for the interactive era or something like that. Maybe something like that. Um, so interactivity is taking over. And, and now let's see if it flows. And just as a starting point to compare. And thank you if you guys have you know, followed until now. Um, so this is, let's just review what we had. So we had this deck here. Uh, let me make it bigger. Okay, so this is what we started from, right? Okay, solution, deep dive. Deep dive, value exchange, the market, traction, uh, and the team, the ask. Okay, so this is what we had. Now this is what we have. And remember, it's not top 1%. We're going for top 20%. We're going for something clear, and there's still a bit of, you know, adjustment and finishing touch. I mean, you can do on your own time, but now we have the company brand, and we have a clear tagline. Uh, so our we're setting the stage. Interactivity is taking over the thirty billion dollar entertainment industry or streaming industry. I don't know which one is correct because maybe it's entertainment, and I, I just don't understand. But uh, I feel like this is like a video streaming project. Uh, so yeah, and then we want to add a few more, like you know, then solution. We're building the entertainment platform for the age of interactivity with some, you know, unique custom features that you know, show that. Then let's show the traction. A thousand surveyed users have confirmed they want Gratwick now. So obviously this traction slide, and that's not a problem of design. It's a problem of facts and materials. Uh, honestly, it would be great if we had stronger materials to beef up that slide. As I said, you know, wait lists, um, testimonials, this kind of stuff. Now the pricing, $7.99. So we know how we make money, it's a subscription, cool. And we explain what people get for that money. And then the market, so, you know, we could probably do the, the other one with the circles, it's much sexier. Uh, I don't have time for that. But yeah, um, the reason I put the pricing before the market slide is because the market is a function of the pricing. Right here, this number comes from 7.99 times 12. So that's why you put the market here because you can explain how you get to those numbers. Now this market size is probably too small for professional investors, right? Um, so I would probably not go with that. You want this to be, you know, a billion plus if you're talking to VCs. So that would be, I don't know, uh, five million times this, right, times 500 million. Yeah, that's better. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm really bad at math. So let's just say this, this is 2 billion, I think. Okay, so now, now it works. But you also want to show your you know, go-to-market, which is another slide. Okay, so we have this for go-to-market, like I said, not super happy with it, but I don't have the materials for it. Now this one is nice. This this competition slide is nice. Obviously it needs some design and you know like 20 minutes of work. But we really have a, a clear explanation of how we position ourselves, uh, where you know the propositions are isolated and unbundled. We rebundle the proposition for creators and the audience. 
And then we have the team, we have a tech guy, we have a business guy, and we have some marketing support. We're raising 400K, so that's why we're raising. And we don't want to give too many details. We don't want to say, okay, what's the valuation, price per share, this kind of stuff. That's for later, that's down the road. Oh, and like, this is a rocket, doesn't really make sense. So there's a website I really love, it's Andro. So Andro is an amazing, amazing, amazing website. Apart from OpenVC, of course, you should, I mean, if you're watching this, of course, you should be on OpenVC. But now here you can say what color code you want, and then you can find an image that fits what you need. Um, and you can search by, by keyword. So I can say, oh, search. Oh, okay. You can say streaming, for example. I don't know if they have, oh, they have a few. No, not so much. Let's try video. Oh, well, there is one actually. Well, video upload, video files, so that's not too bad. Video call. And then, then you can find one that, you know, that works for you. Like this one is not too bad. I like it. It's free. It's completely free. Okay. And so now I'm going to be able to replace this rocket with something that makes sense for me. Like this one. And it's, it has my color codes and it's high quality. Um, so all good. And just to be clear, like, again, there's no excuse to use a shitty, you know, Getty image, uh, corporate, you know, image with some uh, watermark on it. And you can use that and uh, it just works nicely. I think you're supposed to give them credit for that, probably. Uh, honestly, I'm not too sure. But you're a founder, you know, you're not a big firm. Um, just do what I do, right? If you like those products, promote them talk about them to other people and, and that's how you're going to help them. And then again, like the, the photo in the background is this planet Earth is probably not right. So we're going to go to Unsplash. And we want something about uh, movies, for example. So I'm giving you all my tips, all my little, you know, uh, movies, something like that. I don't know. Oh, the popcorn. Yeah, that's... Oh, well, this one is cool. Oh, it's locked. Okay, I'm going to take the popcorn then. Okay. Here. Here. Okay, I have my popcorn. Does that work? Well, I'm not too sure. Well, so you get the idea. You just try to find a background image that kind of fits the, the purpose. I need to move back. So as you can see, I mean, I'm getting my hands dirty, right? I'm not just, you know, telling you to do A or B, I'm doing with you. Okay, that's better. And then I have this thing behind I want to remove, it's ugly. And this one too, and this one too, okay, it's not too bad. Okay, so that's like one way to do it. We can probably play on the, maybe starting from a white color would be nicer. Yeah, that's nicer. So, I mean, you see like on the left and right, there's still some margin I could fix that. I just don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm already way over time. Okay, so this is like, this is how I would, you know, revamp, redesign a pitch deck from scratch. And this is all like just applying some best practices and advice that you would find uh, here. Again, uh, go to openvc.app and then go to how to build a startup pitch deck. And everything I explained today, you're gonna find here, slide by slide, with examples, uh, with the links to all those resources. So that's it. Uh, thanks again to the uh, guys at Gratwick. Thanks, Chris, for being a good sport. I hope you found this helpful. I know this is very different from you know your uh, usual approach, but I, I, I find that you know investors like uh, little text, big fonts, uh, simple flow. And again, the goal is to get that first meeting. The goal is not to explain the whole business, explain every little detail. You will never like, you know, uh, not on the first date, right? 
uh, you need uh, uh, first to get their um, kind of attention or interest. And, and then after that, you have a call, you have a meeting, and that's when you can roll out the whole plan. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope this was helpful. I, will, I hope to see you soon on OpenVC. And if you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, good and bad, I'll be happy to read them on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.